I'm Toshio Inui, medical doctor and CEO of Saisei Marai Group in Japan. In this video, I would like to talk about Saisei Tumor Treating Field Therapy, also called TTF therapy for short. In most cases, we combine TTF therapy and immunotherapy. I will explain the reasons. We have clinics in Osaka, Kobe, and Tokyo. Our head office and cell processing center are in Osaka. Sai Sei Mirai is expanding overseas and now has several branches around the world. Our goal is to help cure serious diseases such as cancer, autism, and infectious diseases. Sai Sei Mirai is conducting joint research with six universities in Japan. A wide variety of researchers from non-medical fields such as engineering, science, veterinary, and pharmacy have come together to develop new treatments. The key concept of cancer therapy I'd like to discuss is the destruction of local cancer tissue in combination with immunotherapy. We must destroy local cancer tissue with minimal side effects, killing cancer cells selectively. Sonophotodynamic therapy ultrasound-guided HIFU and tumor-treating field therapy, in combination with GC-MAF-based immunotherapy, seem to be very promising. We are confident that GC-MAF-based immunotherapy will contribute not only to cancer treatment, but also in mitigating many infectious diseases and immune dysfunction. This diagram outlines our aim of harnessing the immune system to produce an autologous cancer vaccine in our body. Electric fields, ultrasound, and light are applied to target and destroy cancer cells, which scatter cancer antigens in the body. Simultaneously, GC-MAF-based immunotherapy is applied. It stimulates macrophages and dendritic cells, which are antigen-presenting cells, to recognize cancer antigens. The purpose is to train T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes to attack cancer. What is important to understand here is that antigen-presenting cells are abnormal in the body of cancer patients. Therefore, conventional immunotherapy cannot cause T cells or B lymphocytes to attack the cancer. However, after many years of research, we have succeeded in normalizing antigen-presenting cells and have been able to provide effective immunotherapy. I believe treatment should be non-toxic, painless, and effective. Now let's talk about the treatments in greater detail. We provide supportive care in combination with GC-MAF-based immunotherapy. Indeed, immunotherapy and supportive therapies have become very popular worldwide these days. High-dose vitamin C infusion, the new gene therapy we have developed, ozone therapy, and a combination of a few supplements promote cancer treatment. These also promote the improvement in the general overall condition of the patient. This improvement in the general condition is due to the normalization of antigen-presenting cells aimed at intestinal immunity, of which Saisei Murai is proud. It can bring out the body's natural healing power that the patient originally had and synergistically stop cancer from growing. Three years ago, Saisei Murai teamed up with two Japanese companies and successfully developed liposomal P53 and P10 gene therapy I believe this is a breakthrough treatment. In addition, our tumor treating field, electric field therapy, is also improving. The following slide will explain liposomal gene therapy. Let me explain why our gene therapy is so unique. Gendesin and liposomal P53 gene therapy are applied for patients with malignant glioblastoma. It is popular with patients overseas, except Chinese patients. I will explain the reasons. The world's first approved P53 gene therapy is Gendesin, developed in China. It was a good product, but it wasn't very effective, even though it creates a temperature. I used to use it a long time ago, and I didn't like the side effect of fever. As this uses adenovirus as a vector, a fever came on and it only allowed me to use a very small amount of P53 gene, which was not effective. It was about one nanogram at a time. On the other hand, 
Saisei Murai had succeeded in developing liposomal P53 gene therapy in collaboration with three Japanese companies three years ago. It carries about one million times more normal P53 gene than Gendison. It is one milligram at a time. Moreover, it has almost no side effects. I also received an IV drip myself. The liposomal P10 gene therapy was also successfully developed thereafter. Now I'll move on to the next topic. What is tumor treating fields or TTF therapy? TTF therapy is a type of electric field therapy that uses low intensity electric fields to suppress cancer cell proliferation in the body. This treatment is over a decade old. TTF therapy generates electric fields in the human body, which interfere with cell division in cancer cells, triggering apoptosis, cell death. TTF equipment includes coats, vests, helmets, and pants. There is no harm to the patient, and I would offer this treatment method to many patients. This is a photo of the TTF coat. One of our nurses is the model. It's a little baggy and not at all fashionable, so some improvements may be needed to better appeal to female patients. This is the second generation TTF equipment. We managed to make it lightweight and easy to use so that the patient can wear it for a longer period of time. We received positive feedback, but the equipment was very fragile and the series ended up being discontinued. Hiroshima University and Tokushima University are currently working hard to upgrade the quality. TTF equipment consists of a hat, vest, blanket, and generator, and only two AA batteries are needed to operate it. I love the idea of targeting cancer while we are sleeping. It works well as the blood flow in our body is constant while we sleep, since we don't eat or exercise. Thus, the formation of an electric field can't be affected. It is also convenient for many patients who work during the day. One of my patients once said to me that he wishes he could treat cancer while sleeping at night so that he can work during the day. I could not agree more. We thus came up with a way to treat cancer while sleeping through the use of a TTF blanket. This diagram is a draft of a potential TTF bed drawn by a patient. This could be the ideal cancer treatment. I think this is amazing and would really like to make it happen. The electric field affects cell division. As you can see, this figure shows one cell dividing into two. The electric field is uniform only in non-dividing cells. In dividing cells, spindles begin to form by polymerization of microtubules, mitosis and cytokinesis. The effect of an electric field leads to the arrest of both mitosis and cytokinesis. In dividing cells, the electric field will be non-uniform. I have a friend who is a physicist. He says to me, physicists don't understand medicine, but doctors don't understand physics, do they? He's right. To be honest, people in general, including doctors, don't understand physics very well. Let's now discuss the mechanism of electric field therapy. In general, the process is as follows. Continuously generate weak intermediate frequency alternating current electricity toward cancer. An electric field is always created around where electricity is flowing. The electric field attracts things with electric charge. In other words, the electricity that each object or particle has. It's like gravity. It suppresses the division of cancer cells that multiply quickly. I've heard that the electric field can be regarded as a mass of electricity, but I'm not quite sure what that means. Let me explain the mechanism of electric field therapy again. Cellular level one. The electric field is uniform in non-dividing cells. Cell division can be divided into mitosis, in which the nucleus divides in a complex process, and cytokinesis, in which the cytoplasm divides into two parts. In the early stages of mitosis, spindle formation is initiated mainly by the polymerization of microtubules. 
In the presence of an electric field, microtubules are aligned along the electric field, thus inhibiting this polymerization and resulting in mitotic arrest. In cells where spindle formation is completed, cell division from one cell into two cells is initiated. During division, the cell shape becomes hourglass shaped, resulting in the non-uniform distribution of the electric field. As a result, the components of the cell are pushed toward the hourglass shaped neck and the cell structure is broken into pieces. End of segmentation, intracellular macromolecules Organelles migrate to constrictions, which leads to cell destruction. Examples of inhibition of microtubule construction and apoptosis. Abnormal spindles are formed and cancer cells undergo apoptosis. With regards to cell damage by the electric field, the inhibition is maximum when the electric field and the cell are facing the same direction. In this case of cell division, the direction is diagonal. Therefore, if the electric field is created at this angle, the damage to the cancer cells will be about five times greater, but the effect will be less at a 90 degree angle. This is also a research paper by Dr. Kerson. The frequency of the electric field and the size of the cell are inversely correlated, and inhibition is observed at voltages above 1 volt per centimeter. Examples of cell size and frequencies showing optimal growth inhibition. In this paper, intestinal cancer cells are large, so the frequency of the electric field is up to 50 kHz. Breast cancer is about 120 kHz and malignant glioblastoma is about 200 kHz because the cells are small. However, I honestly don't know if this hypothesis will be proven in clinical practice. Clinical trials will provide the final judgment. Also, the size of each cancer cell is different. It also has an inhibitory effect on the growth of normal cells, but it is said to be 50 to 70% less than that of cancer cells. This is the inhibition of cell growth by electric fields in mice. Melanoma cells are injected through the tail vein. In this way, lung metastasis occurs, but the electric field therapy group shows more inhibition of metastasis than the control group. Similarly, in rabbits with renal cancer as the primary tumor, the electric field therapy group showed inhibition of lung metastasis. So what is the difference between SISA TTF and TTF? SISA TTF includes the following, direct current DC pulse. We are currently developing a new electric field therapy. No need to attach directly to the body. Penetrates the air layer. Low voltages and low frequency. Also effective for gastrointestinal cancer and lung cancer among others and it's affordable. TTF includes the following. Alternating current, AC. Use of high conductive ceramic electrodes with direct contact to skin, so the hair needs to be shaved. It needs to be attached directly to the body. No air layers are not allowed. Higher voltages and intermediate frequency not effective for air contact tumors, extremely expensive, and eczema and dermatitis are very common side effects. Indications for electric field therapy. It is used clinically, especially for malignant glioblastoma, lung cancer, and breast cancer. It is also indicated for almost all solid cancers, including head malignancies, neck cancers, chest cancers, upper abdominal cancers, pelvic cavity cancers, and renal and urinary tract cancers. As well, it is indicated for hematological diseases such as leukemia. The effects of electric field therapy are as follows. Prolonging the life of terminal cancer patients, shrinking tumors, disappearing pleural effusions, relieving cancer pain, and decreasing tumor markers. 
the effects appear after about two to three months. Synergistic effects can be expected when combined with immunotherapy. This is the most important thing. This is the effect of electric field therapy. If used daily for more than 12 hours, it will cause necrosis of the tumor in a few months. This is phagocytosed and cleaned by macrophages. The tissue is regenerated at the same time. Synergistic effect of electric field therapy and macrophage therapy. First, electric field therapy is used to damage or kill cancer cells. Macrophages phagocytose the damaged and dead cancer cells. They also clear up cellular debris. Then the tissue is regenerated. For this purpose, we activate tissue resident macrophages. Tissue macrophages are distributed throughout the body and perform a variety of functions. Here, I would like to explain a little about malignant glioblastoma. It originates in the cerebrum and spreads as if it were oozing into the surrounding brain. In other words, it's highly invasive. This is the most malignant tumor with a high incidence of about 40% of adult gliomas. It's the most common malignant brain tumor, less than 10% of intracranial tumors. Most patients are over 60 years old. In 2005, the survival of first stage glioblastoma was increased to 15 months with temozolomide. As of 2020, the five-year survival rate is about 10%. This is why a new treatment is needed. Standard treatment policies with high scientific recommendations as of 2021. In primary glioblastoma, craniotomy is used to remove as much as possible to avoid worsening symptoms. Surgery followed by radiation therapy 60 gray per 30 to 33 fractions per six weeks. Start temozolomide, 75 milligrams per m squared at the same time radiotherapy is started. Six courses of temozolomide, 100 to 200 milligrams per m squared after completion of radiotherapy. Proton beam is very effective if it is possible to do so at the location. This is not yet part of the standard treatment but I think it would be best if this were possible. Unfortunately, Avastin does not prolong survival in glioblastoma, phase three clinical trial. Also, Updevo was found to be ineffective in recurrent glioblastoma in 2017. Keytruda, which is very similar to Updevo, is now being studied. In 2015, it was announced that the use of another company's electric field, Optium, could increase survival to 20 months. Is it true? There is a trick to this. Patients enrolled in the Optune clinical study took 3.8 months from diagnosis to randomization. This is because of the time spent on surgery, pathology, and radiochemotherapy. This is because 30% of patients already have worsening progression during this period, and these glioblastoma patients with early progression who have particularly poor prognosis are omitted at the time of enrollment. I think it is difficult to say whether this is an accurate clinical trial. This is an important molecular change in malignant glioblastoma. This is originally checked to see the classification of the disease, prognosis, and response to treatment, but in reality it doesn't seem to have much significance because new molecular targeted drugs have not been developed. I really hope that new therapeutic drugs can be developed based on genetic mutations. However, our liposomal gene therapy is effective for mutations and deletions in the P53 and P10 genes. Now I would like to move on to the case reports. This is a patient who was treated at our Tokyo clinic. He is a 35-year-old male with glioma. He was diagnosed in August 2016 and underwent surgery radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. However, the tumor kept recurring and growing, and he was told that he had two months to live. At his strong request, his family decided to visit our clinic in December 2017. He started tumor treating field and GC math 
and his consciousness gradually became clearer. In March 2018, the brain tumor was found to have shrunk. After that, both treatments were continued and the patient was stable for nine months. Thereafter, only electric field therapy was used and the tumor continued to shrink and grow until his death in February 2019. Our second case report was for a 65-year-old male with cerebral malignant glioblastoma. He was diagnosed by MRI in February 2020. His symptoms included short-term memory impairment and seizures. Surgery was not possible due to the location. He refused radiotherapy and chemotherapy and started traditional supplements and electric field therapy a little later. His symptoms worsened little by little, so he requested treatment at our clinic. Treatment started in March of this year and included GCMAF injection once every two days, MAF capsules, six capsules per day, P53, P10 gene therapy, two cycles, 12 times, and ozone treatment one time per week. There was no change in his MRI two weeks later, but his seizures and fatigue were mild and he partially returned to work in May. After three months of the treatments, the MRI scan showed the tumor shrinking in size. Case report three was a 27-year-old female with a brainstem tumor. In 2007, her headache and dizziness appeared and worsened. She was diagnosed as having a brainstem tumor and took a number of antiviral drugs and steroids for a short period of time. Six cycles of Temodar were also administered. She was diagnosed as having a malignant brain tumor and visited our clinic on February 27, 2018. What you see here in white is the tumor. It is a cystic lesion with fluid accumulation inside. After the treatment, her headache lessened and her body position facing to the right improved. However, after returning to her home country, the symptoms did not change. For cystic lesions, it is still difficult to improve the symptoms without reducing the fluid content. Case report four is a 67-year-old female patient. Barely able to come to Japan from Australia, she was diagnosed with cerebral malignant glioblastoma in 2015 and underwent surgery, radiotherapy, and temodar. The disease was under control with TTF and GCMAF injection for two years. It recurred in April 2017, and she underwent surgery again. She came to the clinic on June 16, 2017. Her symptoms included extreme weakness and an inability to walk, talk, or eat. She was also taking steroids. Liposomal P53 gene therapy was started on June 16, 2017. After six rounds of gene therapy, she could talk a little and her right leg started to move. After 12 rounds of gene therapy, she started to walk with assistance and she gave hugs to everyone when leaving Japan. Her family was really happy to see her. Now let's talk about some other cases. I will introduce some patients with cerebral malignant glioblastoma that I remember. There was a patient in Israel who had a recurrence after surgery. Massive ozone therapy and GCMAF injection resulted in prominent tumor shrinkage and long-term survival of greater than five years. The subsequent details are unknown. A patient in the United Kingdom took steroid, detox, vitamin C, and vitamin B12 in Germany. The tumor shrank from five centimeters to 3.5 centimeters after one year of using a proton beam. GCMAF injections were then started, as well as MAF capsules, to prevent recurrence. In Japan, there was a patient who had a recurrence after surgery. The patient was stable for 3.5 years with an autologous cancer vaccine, GCMAF injection, and high-dose vitamin C. Unfortunately, this patient died of other diseases. Thank you very much for your attention today, and please feel free to contact us at any time through the information you can see on the screen.